Hey everybody, it's Corey from CoreyBakerFilmmaker.com, and I just saw Hustlers, written by Lorraine Scafaria, and originally magazine article by Jessica Pressler, and directed by Lorraine Scafaria. So, uh, apologies for the lateness of this video. Uh, I've been on set for the last two weeks, and it feels like I don't have enough time to do everything all the time. Uh, so I thank you for your patience. Uh, I saw Hustlers at the Alamo Draft House, Los Angeles. I said last time that I went that the talking was a problem, and that's something I never expected I would deal with at the Alamo Draft House. And I said I, I kind of just didn't want to go for a little while because that kind of soured me on the whole thing. It's the one thing I really expect when I go to the Alamo Draft House, and I didn't get it. So. I wanted to catch Hustlers because I feel felt like if I didn't see it, then it would just like get out of theaters and I wouldn't have a chance until way later. Uh, and it seemed interesting. So I went to the Alamo Draft House, which was right down the street, and there was talkers again. So I, I, I really try and I want to give them every opportunity to make this right as far as like just enforcing the rules. I don't care about anything else. I just want to go to a place where I don't have to worry about people talking. And I thought that's what I was going to get with the Alamo draft house and did not again. So I don't know the next time I'm going to go see something there. Uh, perhaps something that Netflix is showing in theaters and they're the only place that's going to show it. Like the Irishman, I might have to go see at the Alamo, but uh, the whole thing really is souring for someone who is so excited about that theater opening up too. So Hustlers is the story of some high class strippers in uh, Manhattan who cater to the wall street crowd. And uh, every single night they're making, you know, obscene money uh, for the people who will end up causing the financial collapse and after the financial collapse, like the, the club business is kind of dried up. It's not quite the same as it was before. And uh, a group of strippers uh, led by Constance Wu, uh, Destiny, and Jennifer Lopez, Ramona, uh, figure out new ways to rip off the people who ripped off America. So I like this movie, but I also have sort of complicated feelings about what I saw. I like the story in as so much as it sort of tells you know a, a, a real life story told faithfully I imagine um, there is not a lot of poetic license that seems to go into this movie and perhaps this one could use it a little bit more than ones that don't I mean the whenever you're adapting something from a real life source it's difficult to say what the proper balance is between, you know, like how do you shorten up, you know, the, Freddie Mercury might have had a conversation with 15 people in the room, but rather than have an hour and a half conversation between 15 people in Bohemian Rhapsody, you just make it one person who says one thing to him at a different time. And it doesn't change how Queen is. It just makes it easier. Um the other side of that is when you tell sort of a more fantastical version of events or you take the poetic license to create other stories that are interesting. And I feel like Hustlers, though beautiful and dynamic and uh, something clearly different from what most of us are used to seeing in the theater, it still kind of feels like it didn't really give me everything that I wanted from the plot standpoint. And not every movie has to do that, but I just, I, it, it felt me at the end, like there wasn't everything that I hoped for. And that, that at, at the end of the day, that's going to sour, you know, an overall rating of the film. And I, so I think a lot of the problem here is that I enjoyed a lot of the people in this. I, I thought it, just like top to bottom, you know, above the line and below, you know, constant Wu was really good, though. She never really seemed to be as comfortable as you would want. Uh, 
there still seemed to be something about her performance that was just like a little bit distant. And uh, I don't know if it was a choice, but it felt uh, it, it it felt a lo- it felt lessened by the over the topness of Ramona, played by Jennifer Lopez, who does an incredible job in this movie. Um, it sh- part of the problem when you're somebody as famous as she is is that it's hard to watch a movie and not think about the person that you know from public life, but rather the character that she's trying to play. And there were times where that was very easy. And there were times where that was outrageously difficult. Uh, There's moments as the movie goes on where it doesn't feel so much like that, but the actual acting performance, like the, the, the skill and the talent is, is there in spades. She does an incredible job. It just again, like I, I, there's almost like a part of me that feels like while this is a great vehicle for her, I don't know if it's the best version of Jennifer Lopez we're going to get. A lot of the marketing for this movie is populated with like the other women who are in this movie, uh, but more so like, you know, Cardi B and Lizzo, who are strippers in this movie. And... I mean, if you're a huge Cardi B fan, you're probably going to see it anyway. But uh, I wouldn't necessarily like it. It felt like these were kind of stunt casty kind of choices. And again, just, you know, it's not like Cardi B is a bad actor. She's just not like she doesn't have the rep. She's just she just needs she would need more time acting to be able to to do it at a level of like a Constance Wu or Jennifer Lopez or a Julia Stiles, any of the, like there's a ton of like legitimate actresses here. And, uh, you know, there's different schools of thought as to whether or not like everyone can be an actor or an actress, like whether or not it's like something that you can teach and trick and work around. Um, they all did fine jobs, but I, you know, again, just I'd rather see somebody who was doing it for the intention. As far as the actual flick is concerned, I really was blown away by uh, the work that the crew did. It's a it's an exceptionally beautiful movie. The best looking movie I think I've seen about strip clubs ever. Um, And I feel like the world that we currently live in with more like color LED lights populating film sets uh, is never a better time to make something look exceptionally beautiful than set it at a strip club somewhere. It does a, a fantastic job of not only looking great, but sounding great and feeling real and like the locations and the art design and like everybody just did aces jobs like it's it's a phenomenal piece of work uh the editing is good it feels i mean you know uh produced by adam mckay it was uh amongst others there's a long list of producers on this this movie but you can you can definitely feel the influences of adam mckay in this movie and i'm sure a lot of the crew as well um it just it doesn't have the kind of fun of an Adam McKay movie as much. It's weird. It's like I had a lot of fun at this movie and it was good and I enjoyed it, but it wasn't like giddy fun where you can't stop talking about how like smart and innovative the movie was. Um, and that's not a discredit to this movie because there's not a lot of movies that are like you know the big short or something like that which are very dynamic and interesting to watch even though the the subject matter can be very boring and this thing you have a very interesting subject matter because people love strippers and love strip clubs but there's by setting it up in the same universe as to what i was uh, what i saw in something like the big short it made me just wish that it was a little bit more like that you know i don't know it's 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 tough to it's like be like if i influenced wes anderson in a movie just 
one off or just like a couple times, but I, I went really heavy with the Wes Anderson influence and uh, never did anything like it again. That would just seem kind of unusual. Like you would be like, well, why didn't he just make a Wes Anderson type movie if he liked to just do those things? Like, so um, I don't know. It, it just, it's a really great movie that just feels like it felt a little bit short. And that's, that's the, uh, I just hate it. One last thing. I would like to give a tremendous shout out to uh, the entire sound department on this movie. It is amazing that they were able to get such incredible sound from like, how, how do you hide the microphones so discreetly on strippers? It's always a challenge. Uh, the boom operators obviously were incredible uh, at doing their job as well. But it, it was just uh, like, uh, it's a technical thing. I, I think it's worth seeing. It's, it's, it's really, it's really something. It's, it's, it's worth ingesting if you're, if you make movies. It, it would, it, I think it would be very interesting to you to watch. Next up, it's the leaderboard. Um, another one for Elmo Draft House. Don't know. Don't know when the next time I'm gone. I don't know. I, I just, uh, I've never been so excited by something and then like let down and disappointed at the same time. It's really awful. It's like, uh, I don't know. At some point, I'll go back. I don't know when. Um, On to the movie leaderboard. It's so hard to talk about like how a movie can be good and worth seeing and enjoyable, but also at the same time, sort of like say it's flawed in a, in a slightly slight way. And I don't think it's anyone's fault. Like there's not like one place to like point a finger at it. Just like, for whatever reason, this movie just didn't, it, it takes a perfect confluence of events to put together a movie that is brilliant, that like is exceptional. So like uh, just from the history of me doing these reviews, nines are very rare, rarefied air. And when they happen, uh, it's most likely because just the right person was in the right role and the right director made the right choices and it's the right screenplay and the right crew and it's beautiful and new and amazing yet familiar and blah, 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 blah. It's got to be so many things. It's almost unacceptable to expect all the time. That's why I like the fact that they're kind of rare on the leaderboard. But it's worth seeing, but it is flawed. That's that's basically the the too long didn't read version of what I was about to say. Anywho, uh, if I had to give Hustlers a rating, I would give it a 7.9. Um, this, I don't know. I Something tells me that I remember this movie a lot more fondly, but just sort of like my first impression of the experience of this movie was not overwhelming anyway that's it if you want more you can go to my website coreybakerfilmmaker.com facebook.com forward slash coreybakerfilm or at legend cb5 on twitter instagram snapchat um i'm still on set uh for another week uh but i'm absolutely gonna go see joker i'm absolutely gonna go see ad astra uh as soon as i have time i'd like to just churn out reviews and like sort of catch up a little bit if you will uh, a flood the zone after being off the market for a little bit, but I appreciate you watching. I appreciate it when you leave comments or likes or share it with people. Uh, all that is greatly appreciated. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Now, if you don't mind, I have to uh, go put on my mink coat and take on the town. <laughs>